Hey guys, welcome to Practical Home Projects. So our project this week was installing an end panel next to our dishwasher. So the way we set up our cabinet alignment was to have the dishwasher at the very end of a run. And then of course dishwashers are not designed to have their edges exposed, so you need to cover that up. And also to kind of keep the aesthetic uh, clean look of the kitchen. So we had two options. So one option was to install a wooden end panel like we did. Another option would be to install what's called a pony wall or a half wall. Uh, so that would be framed out in two by fours, covered with drywall, and that would kind of blend in with the walls. We chose not to go that route because we thought it would be A, a lot more material that we would have to use, and B, it would kind of ruin the aesthetic of our kitchen, especially since we have an end panel on the end of our refrigerator over there. So let me just jump right into some of the considerations with installing this end panel. So we were fortunate enough to have an extra panel from the cabinet set that we were using. If you're kind of doing this from scratch, IKEA will be able to provide you with an extra panel. Lowe's will be able to provide you with an extra panel if you purchase cabinets from them. Um, otherwise, you might need to create your own uh, piece of plywood and then stain it to match or paint it to match. So really the end solution that we want is for a piece of end panel to have a perfectly level top and a perfectly vertically level uh, front side. So this back side just needs to be as close to contour to the back wall as possible. And then the floor, there's a little bit of a gap there because we're shimming it. Um, but we're going to cover that up with uh, shoe molding. So kind of the trickiest part of this whole project is making sure that this back uh, edge lines up as well as possible. So this wall actually leans back just a little bit, maybe over the course of this run about a quarter of an inch. So what I actually did before I did the cutout is I put a piece of wood next to it and then I got the board as perfectly squared on the top and the front as I could and then I drew a line right here to kind of make sure I had the angle and then later on when I went to go cut it I knew exactly what angle I needed that to be at and I just adjusted to make this the length that I needed as well. So of course this isn't following every single contour but you can see that's a pretty tight fit against the back wall and then of course I can make sure the top and the front are level by adjusting those shims at the bottom. I'm actually doing all my work from the back of the panel and that's for two reasons. Number one, I like to write all over it. You obviously don't want that on your finished surface. And the other one is that when I use my circular saw, the blade's going to be spinning this way and it's going to chip out on the top surface. So that means that the uh, finished surface is going to be nice and smooth underneath. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and then we'll do a dry fit and then I will uh, see what about that front panel piece. So right now I'm just putting this piece of wood here as a fence to basically hold along the edge of my uh, saw as I go along. So I'm obviously going to be cutting this way. So what I'll do is I'll put the saw against it and I'll set the fence exactly. I like to do this rather than kind of measuring or using some other caliber. Um, because I really need to make sure that I'm spot on, like I'm cutting exactly on the right side of that uh, drawn line. And then I can just use the back of the saw on this side to make that same adjustment. So if I look at it, I'm pretty much spot on, maybe just a hair too far um, that way. So I'm going to bump it a smidge. Yeah, that's better. And then I'm just using these two bark lamps to hold the fence in place. Double check that now that I bumped it. Yep, I think that looks a little bit better. So now I can uh, keep these tight and I don't have to worry about it walking all over the place. It should be spot on as long as my line and this piece of wood are both straight. So yeah, you see we kind of had a little bit of chip out here along this edge. Um, so that's why I'm glad to have done it on the back. Now we'll look at the front. And you'll see that same edge has a razor sharp cut to it. So now we've got our end panel in place, 
it took a while to sort of get it stabilized because there's nothing for us to press it up against. But I used the laser level to make sure that it was the right height. We used the, the leveler to make sure that it was straight front to back. Um, one trick I used to kind of help me hold it in place is to use these 90 degree brackets. So I have two on the floor and then one right here on the wall. So I know exactly where it's supposed to be and that meant a little bit less adjustment. I also intentionally left it about an eighth uh, short so that I could put the shims in the bottom and really make sure the top was exactly level where it was supposed to be. Um, in order to do the shims, I actually just took a regular shim and sliced it in half so now it's perfectly the width of this. So in addition to this end panel being sort of a decorative finish to hiding the end of the side of the dishwasher, it's also going to be structural so we're going to have our countertop hanging out and being supported on top of it. So just to give us a little bit of extra support, I went ahead and installed this uh, 2x4 right here which goes straight to the floor to help hold up the weight. And then we also installed this back uh, railing to hold the weight of the countertop. So the most important thing whenever you're setting this up, it kind of goes along with setting up your cabinets, is to make sure everything is exactly the same level. So I used the laser level to make sure that line was perfectly flat. And then I made sure this was flush as well so that when our cabinet countertop sit on it, it'll have a nice solid contact with everything and there's not going to be high spots and low spots because obviously a piece of stone countertop is not going to bend and flex a whole lot. So if after you finish your panel installation or really any cabinet installation, you realize that you have a gap here, maybe just intermittently or maybe along the whole length of it, you can install what's called scribe molding and it's just a flexible piece of wood, maybe an inch and a half uh, wide or so and that pretty much goes right up against the side of your cabinet and it will, you can kind of push it against it. It's essentially like shoe molding, but it's totally flat. Um, and we're actually gonna have to use that in another part of our section, uh, another part of our kitchen. And that will help you sort of cover up the gap and make it look more aesthetic. So the final piece of our project is gonna be installing this piece of edge trim. So in addition to the three quarter inch piece of panel, we have our two by four, and then I've got a little bit more of a gap right there. So this will cover all of it up with one nice succinct piece. And I'm just going to put a couple of trim nails and maybe some glue in there to hold that in place. So this is not going to be load bearing. I'm actually going to wait until I have the flooring installed before I put this in. So I don't have it ready yet. Um, and then after that, this should be a nice seamless look all the way across the end panel to the dishwasher to the cabinets on the other side. Um, so that's pretty much everything for your dishwasher in, uh, end panel installation. I uh, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And we'll try to get more good content out there to you. Thanks.